Coming up today on That LTD Life, I'm gonna be testing out Path Pro. This is a new lifetime deal at AppSumo for a feature collection slash roadmap tool. You've seen these before, particularly with software developers, where you've got ideas, things that you want to see them add, and you log into their website, add a feature, and other people can upvote it. Well, now you can have one of those boards and people can submit ideas for your products or services. Now, the good news here is you can get this type of tool for just 49 bucks over at AppSumo. And that is a pretty good price because it's not a monthly recurring cost. It's a one-time fee of just 49 bucks. Now, I'm gonna be showing you all around Path Pro in this video. I'll show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you can decide whether or not it's a good fit for your business. If you wanna support this content, you can click my AppSumo link down below before making a purchase. It could be for Path Pro, it could be for anything at AppSumo. There's no limit on the number of times you can do that, by the way, so just make sure you click my link before each purchase. All right, onwards, let's check out the plans and pricing. So 49 bucks is pretty attractive. However, AppSumo has gotten really good over the years at kind of stepping you up the ladder, right? Each tier just seems like it's a little bit more attractive. So tier one gives you two projects. Now, you could really replace the word project with product or service. These are the things you want people voting on. So go ahead and just mentally do the math. How many different projects would you need? Because that's going to walk you right up alone. But there's other reasons you might want to go higher like community members. Those are going to be your customers. Do you have more than 200 customers? Do you hope to have more than 200 customers? Well, if you do, move up to at least tier two where you get unlimited. Same thing goes for team members. Those are gonna be the people on your team that are reviewing the user submissions before posting them live. You get four with tier one and unlimited with tier two. That escalated quickly. On tier two, you can also make roadmaps private and you get task lists. On tier three, we add in white labeling so you can add your own custom domain. Now, actually all tiers get custom domains, but with tier three, we can remove their logo and add in yours. All right, so this is Path Pro. I've already been trying it out. Everything works very good. It's a very functional tool here. I definitely would recommend this if you're the right fit. Like, do you need to gather user feedback and have a product roadmap? Okay, that's the first step. And then the next step would be, are you okay with something looking a little bit more on the technical side? It's not bad, but I would say just the overall fit and finish is going to lean more heavily towards an engineer than maybe a very user-centric front end. You'll see what I mean as we go. Let me just walk you through the different features. So if I go over here to projects, that's what we were talking about earlier. This will be your products or services. I added in a project here called Dave's LTD Reviews. My idea was that you could submit an idea for a product that I would review and then other people could upvote it. And then the most popular ones, those reviews would get made. Pretty simple feature or a pretty simple idea. We can click on this and kind of see how everything is organized. So this is the roadmap section. And in the roadmap, we can add these task groups. They're kind of like stages in a Kanban system. You could really organize this however it makes the most sense to you. I choose to do it based on kind of like stage of where it's at in development. So these would be like user submitted ideas. Then we've got videos that are currently in production as well as videos that have already been published. Now in each task group, you actually have tasks. So a task here could be to make a video on Path Pro. And if I open up this task, we can see all of the features that are available. So every task needs a title and you can add in a description if you want. Then you can choose what type of task it is. And these are all built in. They're very, very like developer centric, right? We've got CSS style updates, code updates, UI, UX updates. So yeah, general tasks, product ideas, feature review, needs feedback, you know, very, very uh, where to eat. So kind of all over the place in terms of the different types of tasks you might see. Then the next section is add the task to a particular group. It's in the ideas group right now. We will leave it there for now. You can move these around like a Kanban system. You don't have to do it inside the editor. There's visibility here. It's currently published. Then there's status, right? So this kind of conflicts with the idea of using the stages as the status of an item, but that's how I think makes the most sense visually. But we can also add in things like coming soon, complete, confirmed, so let's say I mentioned this one is confirmed. It's, you know, I'm definitely going to be making this. It's still in the idea stage, but I'm going to be making it. So it's confirmed. We can see what that looks like in a moment. I could also assign this to a particular team member and give credit to an end user if someone submitted it. 
That way, if it gets actually rolled into production, well, then you release a change log and can give credit to whoever had the idea for the feature. Over to the right here, we have the discussion section. You can enable things like upvoting and displaying stats. You can also enable commenting and suggestions and allow comment upvoting. So I've done a few comments here just to kind of see how this works. So you can add a comment right here and we'll, we'll look at this from the end user's perspective momentarily. Uh, so here was the first comment that I added. I also pinned it to the top, which is an option. Then uh, the end user can upvote this if they want and even reply to it. And when they reply to it, it is nested. So everything shows up underneath. Then down below here is a second user coming in uh, and adding their own comment. So you can see this is more uh, not, not nested. It's in line with the other comments. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump over to a private window here. So I'm logged in as a community member now. And let's head over to the roadmap section. And here is the idea. So we can click on this and we can see the conversation. We can see the status. And by the way, here is the status right here marked coming soon. So you can see that having the Kanban system in stages and then also having you know the status here, that could still be helpful and communicative of where things are at, maybe like an intermediary status type of idea. Now, if I wanted to upvote this task, I would just click right here and it becomes upvoted. The one bit of feedback I have on Path Pro is, well, other than it's you know not necessarily the most stylish thing, it's a little bit slow with the upvotes. I did find myself, um, I'll unclick this. You can see how long that takes. I found myself the first time I clicked it, clicking it again and then accidentally uh, unvoting it. So yeah, definitely just a little bit sluggish. You'd expect that number to go up immediately, but I have enough time to move my mouse away and then kind of wait before it actually updates. All right, so that is the roadmap feature. Pretty simple, but there's also feature voting. Let's check that out. So under feature voting, people can submit ideas for features and they can be upvoted. You're not necessarily moving anything through different stages. It's simply ideas that people would like to see added. So I've got an LTD chatbot as a feature idea to add into the services that I offer. And if I like this, I could go ahead and click here to upvote it. Once you do, it adds a little set of flames here to indicate this is a highly upvoted feature, I guess, in comparison to everything else. Now, keep in mind, this is a totally public board. So anywhere you see this icon, which it did appear on the roadmap as well, you can click on this and then share a link to this direct feature. So if you're in a Facebook group discussion and someone says, oh, I wish they would add such and such to such and such, and you know that that feature already exists, you can go here, grab the sharing link, and then paste it into the Facebook group. And then when someone opens it up in a private window, they will see directly into that feature request. Of course, they would need to create an account then to go ahead and upvote it. So here's what it looks like when you're not logged in. To create an account, of course, you can just go ahead and click on this link and it takes you to a little login screen here. Actually, I just found a bug. So if I click right here to join the conversation, it takes me to a white screen and I actually cannot register. However, if I go back out and I click on join product, it actually takes me to the registration screen. So uh, something if the developers happen to see this video, you might wanna get that fixed. Otherwise, I can go ahead and register as a user here. And now that I'm registered, of course, I can go in and do all the things I can upvote, check out the comments, leave my own comment, and of course, even upvote my own comment. I would like to see the fact that there are comments or suggestions made a little bit more clear in the user interface. There's currently just this really dull indicator that there's been one suggestion made. So it says feedback or suggestion. To me, it just feels more like a comment section, um, but there you go, just that's my two cents. That should definitely be a little bit more clear that you shouldn't have to squint to see if there's any activity. So how are items added to either the roadmap or the feature voting? Well, that'll be done right over here to the feedback submission. So I'll click on submit feedback and I get a little form that pops out from the side and I can give my idea for the product or service. All right, so here is my feedback idea. I'll go ahead and submit this. Now remember, I'm still logged in as a community member right now. So it says uh, that the feature suggestion was sent. I can close the window and let's pop back over into the admin mode and I'll cancel out of this. And now if I go over to the left-hand sidebar, I can click on submissions and I can see that this is the submission I just sent from regular Joe. This is podcast version and its current status is new. 
Now I can review and even update the submission and then add it to either the roadmap or feature voting. I'm gonna add it to feature voting and I'll confirm the adoption. Now back over to my end user account, I can reload this page and I should see podcast version show up right here. Maybe that was already there before I reloaded, I didn't see. Kind of expected, honestly, to for it to show up underneath this card. I didn't think it would be side by side. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna show up as a grid, so that's interesting. I think a list view would be a little bit nicer. All right, so we've now covered feature voting and the roadmap. Let's check out release notes. So this is something that is not generated by users. Instead, it'll be done by your team. So I'll bop right back over into my admin area and I can go to release notes here. I did try this feature out. So you can see I've got a release note. We can open this up and see what it looks like. Essentially, it's just a little text editor where we can go ahead and enter in our change log and then people can know what has been adopted in the new version of our product, service, tool, whatever we're releasing. To add a new release note, you just go right over here and then you add a title, a description to talk about whatever you've changed and you can even indicate what tasks have been completed as part of the release. Now, like I already mentioned, the release notes show up right here next to the roadmap for your users, but there's another feature. It is the project news, which slides out kind of like a beamer bar, although a little less aesthetically pleasing if I'm being honest. And here we can see any big news or news releases. I mean, AppSumo even uses this themselves on their own website. Let's check it out. Of course, we've got the bell icon. We can click on that and see all of the newest releases from AppSumo, or at least the important project news. So if we wanna add some project news, we just click on the project news tab, go ahead and add news updates, and then type out whatever you like. Now I did notice there are no images here, no other way to make these a little bit more interesting. So I just went ahead and found a quick GIF here. I'm gonna see if I can actually embed this into the project news here, just to see if we can add a little bit of, it's iframe code, I doubt this will render, but we'll try it out. Add a little bit of pizzazz to our updates. All right, let's go ahead and click on project news. And yeah, it doesn't show up. It just shows the iframe code, bummer. So there's an obvious thing that this tool could add, the ability to add in GIFs or images, maybe in inline videos, links, embeds, things like that, links out to YouTube for project releases or demo videos, things like that. All right, so we've covered most of the tool at this point. I'm just gonna go through and cover any other areas that I might've glossed over. So we saw the submissions, we've got our community members down here, so you can actually see who is signed up and you know view their actual profiles. Um, you can see where they've participated, any comments that they left, things like that. You can even change their role, so you can change them from being a community member to a uh, lead developer or elite contributor. And then down here, we can see our team members. Remember, those are the people on your team that you know work with you, they can log in and review those feature requests or make any changes to the platform. We can add a team member right here. And essentially we just assign them to particular projects and they'll have admin roles for those projects. Next up is band members. No, this is not Aerosmith or Guns N' Roses. This is users who have maybe misused the platform and you no longer want to comment on your uh, updates or things like that. You can go ahead and ban people right here. They'll show up in this list. You know what, why don't we go ahead and ban someone? So I'll go over to my community members and we'll go to this regular Joe. I'll select them and let's see, how do I actually ban them? So there's bulk actions to delete members. We can filter them by their rank. And if I click on the triple dots, I can remove the members access to this project. So um, I will go ahead and choose ban member, hit confirm. And then it says, uh, I got a little error because I think the user disappeared and we go to banned members. Currently no banned members. Uh oh, yeah, it's saying no query results for model and then it gives me a path here and then undefined. So um, maybe I'll try checking both of these boxes and hit confirm. Yeah, it looks like the ban function is not working. Uh, odd omission, but uh, maybe, well, the option to ban them is now gone. This action is unauthorized. Did I just ban myself? All right, I was able to get back in, but unfortunately my user is still here. It looks like the ban function is not functioning currently. And the last option in this tool is right down here where it says settings and design. You can go ahead and modify the look of the tool a little bit. You can add your own custom CSS in, but uh, in my opinion, it needs a little bit of an overhaul completely. So if you are really gung-ho, you could probably put a brand new skin on this, but it would be a task for sure. So what we do here is upload our logo. 
We can change the language they're using. That's important. I don't see enough fields here, to be honest. You can change the name of feature voting, roadmap, release notes, project news, as well as the submit feedback button. There's one more button I'd like to change is this one right here when you're not logged in as an end user, join product. I think that feels a little bit cold. I wish I could change that language a little bit, but it's good they're making steps here to update the language. It's just not all the way there. We need to uh, basically to be able to customize all of the language throughout the entire tool, in my opinion. And down below here is where you actually add in your own custom domain. Uh, once you do that, you hit confirm and they will issue you an SSL certificate. Okay, so that was Path Pro. Now I'm gonna give this a final score in a moment, but first go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps this channel grow. All right, now Path Pro, I think this is a fairly well thought out tool. It just needs a fresh coat of paint. And of course there was that incident where I couldn't ban a member, that definitely needs to get fixed. But when you compare something like Path Pro to maybe Canny, which is currently $359 per month, well, I can overlook uh, you know, an ugly user interface. I mean, that doesn't bother me that much. So bottom line, I'm gonna go ahead and give Path Pro a 6.6 .6 out of 10. It needs some work, it needs a new user interface, but overall, I think there's some good bones underneath. But what do you think? Is Path Pro on the right path? Leave me your opinion down below in the comment section. Maybe I'll use your comment in the next episode of the Taco Truck Roundup. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. My name is Dave. I'll see you in the next review.